uh, I'm going to speak a bit about importing into the U.S., which may seem or or it is uh, sort of like a basic uh, a matter, right? And many many of your viewers, Lalo, may think, well, this is so basic. I mean, I, I know this. I do this every day. Uh, so so what is what is it to it, right? Well, I mean, let's talk about it, right? Because there are many aspects that in practice can be very complicated and can be very complex. And I always like to talk about the basics because then we know and realize that the basics are not so basic, right? Once we start discussing and looking at the details, I'm always like to give out my info just in case you guys have any questions and then want to you know, reach out with anything that you're seeing. Uh, we're also on social media. So this is our QR code. From the beginning, of course, reasonable care. Evidently, Customs asks all importer to exercise what they describe as reasonable care when providing customs any information related to classification, valuation, duties, and admissibility. And they define it as reasonable, but I think it practice it goes beyond reasonable, right? It just means to do everything that is necessary to give customs correct and accurate information. I think it's important to know as well what are CBP's priorities, right? What are they most looking at? Of course, agriculture and quotas, anti-dumping duties, conservation in duties. And I put their trade remedies as well, because in my opinion, we are in the era of trade remedies, section 301, 232, 201, anti-dumping, countervailing duties. So all of that is a big deal now. This has been a big deal some, for, since the last, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven years. Uh, it wasn't that the case before. Now it is, and we need to make sure that we are correctly declaring our country of origin or HTS goes and correctly paying any anti-dumping countervailing duties and any trade remedies if we have to. Very, very important. This is so complex in practice, but we're going to continue uh, uh, discussing it as well. That includes on the trade remedies you were talking about, <clears throat> sanctions. And uh, with uh, so many different things going on, Russia, Ukraine, we just talked about that, and uh, Lalo and I did on another show. China situation, the China-Taiwan, you've got uh, the terrorist activities with Iran, you got North Korea, and then you also have Hamas and all that going on. So with all of that, you need to vet what you're saying is have the right information and do your due diligence up front. So that's your basic things as you're getting into this, because we're going to get into more advanced uh, discussion here. Yes, exactly. And the geopolitics is now a big part of uh, trade, right, of trade policy. So we need to be focused and know what's out there, what's going on, who are we having as a country issues with, because that translates to policy in terms of trade. So that's a big deal right now. It wasn't before. I mean, if we think about it, we, 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 I mean, we didn't see the new stuff that directly impacted trade before, I mean, five, 10 years ago. I mean, it was like, kind of like, you know, trade, they, they said it was boring, right? Always the same, well, not anymore. I mean, I, I, I don't think it was boring then, but it's definitely not boring now. I mean, I think we should talk a bit about customs brokers. We are, of course, intermediaries between uh, customs and the importer. Uh, and we do what is referred to as customs business, right? So that is what we do. Uh, if somebody, if anybody does customs business on behalf of someone else, they need to be a licensed customs broker, right? And in the U.S., it's not an obligation to use a customs broker, but nevertheless, more than 95%, more or less, of entries are done by an actual customs broker. As Adrian said, you don't necessarily need a customs broker to make an entry. Uh, you can do it yourself, but it's like, it's like, um, it's like doing I your guess, own taxes. <laughs> I was about to say that. I was about to say that. I was going to say my kids are, are early enough in their career where things are not complicated and yeah, they can do their own taxes, but there's no way that you and I, Andy and Adrian are going to do our own taxes because we know Different incomes, different revenues. Yeah, of course. I mean, if it, yeah, and some, the, the benefit that we provide as brokers is that we have many customers. And by the time that we haven't been in this business 10, 15 years, we mostly have seen a little bit of everything, right? Uh, so we know how, what to do. Uh, many importers, they just have certain industry, certain type of commodity, and they may not be aware of other stuff once they start growing. So that's the value I think we provide is saying, you know what? This is what I do every day, all day. Let me do it for you. And, and we don't charge, honestly, in my opinion, 
and we don't charge that much considering all that we can do for you for importers. So always make sure that you are providing good descriptions. These are examples of descriptions that Canadian customs actually, but I think that they're equally valid for U.S. customs. These are big descriptions and appropriate descriptions. Electronic goods, electronics, th that is not a, a, a good description to keep customs. W w what electronic? What are you talking about? Oh, this is a computer. This is a monitor. This is a television. Mobile telephones, DVD players. Oh, now I get what you're importing, right? Machines. Well, well what kind of machine, right? Well, it's a sewing machine, a printing machine. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Metal. Well, what, what kind of metal? What were we talking about? There's many types of metals. So it, in reality, that's a description that we sometimes see. Uh, and other worse than those, I guess, you know, consolidated commodities. <laughs> so what are you talking about, right? So make sure always that you have a good description, a good description. Description is a description, in my opinion, that describes your product at the commercial level, but also that CVB can link it to an HTS code. So, so it's kind of like the middle. I mean, you, you can't be uh, 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 on each side entirely, right? You can use a code, right? Well, that's a commercial uh, item that you do. A24, no, 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 I don't need that, right? But also you shouldn't use the exact uh, HTS description. Uh, 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 motors, yes, other, other, others. <laughs> We spoke about this already. There are many, many agencies, right? More than 50 can regulate importation of goods. Very important that importers uh, make sure that they are in compliance, that they, and it's not, compliance is not giving me broker the two, three, five data points that I'm asking. No, it's making sure that you're in compliance with the regulations and the law at the detail level, right? Uh, and once you're in compliance, then giving me the information, ECC, right? Usually just, okay, yeah, yeah. This is, this is what you need to do. That's it. But again, the important uh, part, part of this is to be in compliance.